Hey, everybody. I hope you're doing good today. Just wanted to send a quick shout out and thank everybody. We're at 18,300 subscribers. It's really growing. This channel is definitely growing. And point out that if you like this channel and you love the content that I put out, please watch my previous video, What to Watch in 2023. It gives you an update of content that's going to be coming to the channel in the next 90 days and what to expect in 2023. Got a lot of partnerships coming in and people that want to push open source and people that want to sponsor open source content. So if they're willing to support it, we're willing to support them. Just my personal opinion. And also, I want to remind everybody that for just 99 cents, you can become a member to the channel. Uh, starting January 1st, 2023, the MVP, VIP, and Pro levels will disappear and all those perks will drop over to just the 99 cent member, which is a great way to support the channel and a great way to support the content you like. Okay, on that note, I want to send a shout out to two of my newest members, which is Keith and Victor Simeonoff. Now, I probably pronounced that wrong. Simeonoff, Victor Simeonoff. More than likely, I messed it up. If I did, Victor, please let me know in the comments below. But Keith and Victor, thank you so much for joining the channel. You don't know how much this means to me. I love and enjoy the support. Now, today's video is going to be a little different. I am tired of the Linux BS. And when I mean the Linux BS, um, let me just get over to a search engine. Hold on. Let's say you open a search engine and you're looking, you're new to Linux. You haven't used it before or you're somebody that's played around with it once or twice and you want to get some information. So you go out there and you go uh, Linux. Oh, sorry. Let me click up here. Linux distro for beginner. You type that in and do a search. And then you get something. Here's September 8th, uh, 2022. Best Linux distro that are most suitable for beginners. And you come over here and you go down here. You've got Ubuntu. You've got Linux Mint. You've got Zorin. Elementary. Linux Lite. And you got Manjaro Linux. They actually popped Manjaro in there. Pop OS is good. Peppermint. Uh, you get some good suggestions, but then every now and then you run across an article that you just look at it and you go, what are they talking about? So let's zip on over to this one real quick. And this is by ZDNet, and I'm not I'm not going to bash anybody here, but it, it, it comes down and says there are three tiers of Linux distributions, and they go with uh, the first one is, tier one is easy, but I want to read, want you to read something real quick right here. It says, Pop OS might have a complicated name, but it makes using Linux so easy. See what it says right there? So easy. So we scroll down here to tier one, which is easy, the best Linux distros for beginners. And we get Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Zorin OS, and Ubuntu Budgie. What does everybody see there? That is all Ubuntu. Ubuntu, Linux Mint, based on Ubuntu, Zorin OS, based on Ubuntu, and Ubuntu Budgie. That's all you get. What they're telling you right off the bat is the only way you can use it to be easy is to use Ubuntu. Point blank period. No mention of Debian. No mention of any Arch distros. Why? Because those are just too damn hard. No, they're not. And here's what gets me. In their own list, they tell you right here, Pop OS might have complicated name, but it makes using Linux so easy, but they don't put it on the easy list. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Let me keep going here. Now we've got the moderate. These are the ones that are moderate. They're a little harder to use, and you should stay away from them if you're just now beginning in Linux. So we're going to come down here. What do they say? They say Pop OS is moderate. If you've never used Linux before, stay away from Pop OS because it's, it's easy up top in their little quote, but they don't put it with the easy distros, but they bring Pop OS down here. Easy to use, but GNOME and sort of developer-centric. Okay, you guys out there watch my channel on a daily basis. Please tell me how Pop! OS is developer-centric. It gives you the easy way to install it. It gives you the easy NVIDIA. Uh, you can add that right at installation because they got a total separate uh, ISO so you can install your NVIDIA. How is this developer-centric? Fedora. Very easy, but defaults to GNOME. Okay, the first two, he's basically saying Gnome's too hard for the new user. Don't use it. I could see how Fedora might be moderate, specifically if you get into doing like the RPM fusion packages and things like that. Fedora can kind of push more toward the moderate side. Elementary OS, gorgeous Mac OS like desktop, 
but the app store is limited. Yes, it is limited. But if you're new and you just want to get a taste and you want to get into something easy, I believe elementary is pretty dang easy. Do you disagree with me, guys? And, and they got deep in Linux, very beautiful, user-friendly desktop, but neither Snap or Flatpak are integrated into the app store. That's because Deepens come up with their own apps. Why would you say if flat packs and snaps aren't there, it's not easy to use? Deepin gives you the applications you need to use. They've created their own little app ecosystem. The only problem is, is do you want to use a distro from China? That's your call. You can download everything that you need right there in their app store. Bodhi Linux. Eh, okay, Bodhi Linux may be a little bit moderate. I agree with that. Garuda Linux, a bit more challenging than any new user could work with. Really, Garuda Linux has probably been my easiest install, my easiest upkeep, and my easiest uh, distribution I've ever used for getting software and applications, and it didn't break. So where do you, you know, I can see where you could kind of put that moderate, but Garuda, Bodhi, and Pop! OS are all three moderate? Out of all three of those, Pop! OS is the easiest to use, and Pop! OS is definitely deserving to be up one. And then you come down a little bit more and you've got Peppermint OS, OpenSUSE. They put OpenSUSE on the same list as Pop! OS. OpenSUSE can be a little challenging. I'm going to agree with you there. But it's not. It, Pop! OS is a lot less challenging than OpenSUSE. MX Linux is on this list too. MX Linux is a moderate operating system. I don't know how. Everything is right up front. It makes it really easy. Then you've got KDE Neon, one of the best KDE plasma distributions on the market. That's what he puts right there. It's pretty easy to use. Everything's pretty simple out of the box. But it's on a moderate list. Is that because it's KDE? Then you've got El Ubuntu, an Ubuntu-based distribution that uses the LXQT desktop, which makes it look a bit outdated. So because it looks outdated, it's moderately hard to use. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying and what I'm trying to get my point to is when you go down here to the challenging ones, it's Gen 2 Arch Linux, Linux from scratch. I can see those are challenging. Yes, they are. But these lists up here of moderate or easy to use, that's the problem. When people go looking for Linux and they want to find something that's easy to use, they put that little command into the search bar and they go, what's going to be easy for me to use? And they go with what they're told on these articles. And these articles are generally bull crap. Now, if you know somebody that wants to use Linux or they want to know what an easy distribution is to use, stop doing these searches like this or tell them to stop doing these searches like this. Point them to my channel. If you don't point them to my channel, point them to somebody else's channel that you like. I'm going to tell you, send them to somebody that knows what they're talking about because I'm tired of these tech writers jumping on these websites and everything is contradictory. They tell you right here, Pop! OS might have a complicated name, but it makes using Linux so easy. But then when you come down here to the easy list, it's not there. Where's it at? It's on moderate. So what's going to happen is new people that come over won't know how great Pop! OS truly is. Do you have a computer with an NVIDIA? Go download Pop! OS with the NVIDIA ISO. Plug it in and you'll be rolling before you know it. It's pretty simple and self-explanatory, but it's got the GNOME desktop and it's developer-centric. These guys are blowing smoke up people's butt. They get paid to put these articles out there. I know this video is different than what I usually make, but it just irritates me. If you're still watching this video and you know somebody that wants to try Linux, or you know somebody that has been doing searches about Linux, like I said just a while ago, point them at my channel. If you don't point them at mine, Point them at somebody else's that you enjoy to watch that put out good information because they're going to get better information from people like me and people like the other YouTubers out there that actually use Linux on a daily basis and know what the pitfalls are. We're not going to lie to them. I recommend Garuda Linux to new users. Why? Because it runs smooth. It runs easy. People tell me sometimes I'm crazy. You don't ever recommend Arch to new users. Why? Why are we still lost in that that? mindset that if it's not Ubuntu or Debian, a new user can't use it. It's BS, and that's what I'm tired of. All the Linux BS that comes from these websites. If you guys disagree with me, please put it in the comments below. And if you agree with me, please let me know about that too. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video 
If it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms. YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee. Maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation. Or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video. And I will see you in the next video.